Hi everyone, I'm Diana McElvintal with Team RCIA. One question we get a lot from catechumen ministers is this, who gets dismissed at Mass when it's time to dismiss the catechumens? It's a simple question, but it's easy to get confused. And it's an important question because the answer teaches us something essential about baptism. So let's get started. First, let's meet our seekers. These are some of the typical kinds of people who participate in the catechumenate process. First, let's meet Jane, who is unbaptized and wants to be initiated. This is Alex. He was baptized in the Catholic Church when he was a baby, but was never confirmed, nor has he shared in the Eucharist. Finally, we have Fred. He's been an active Lutheran all his life, and now he wants to become Catholic. Now that we know who's here, let's look at each of their roles in the liturgy. The first thing to understand is that the initiation process is a journey of faith and conversion from no status in the church to becoming a member of the priestly people of God. That journey is made up of a series of liturgies that change a person's status in the church. Now, don't think of status in the church as being better than someone else. A better term is order, which in church terms refers to the role a person has in the body of Christ. A body has many different parts and each part is important because each part has a particular job. If any part is missing, the body can't function as effectively. In the body of Christ, each of us has a specific job according to our order. So the initiation rites change a person who has never known Jesus into someone who becomes so much like Jesus that they are sent out into the world to do what Jesus did for others. Now let's take a look at how this happens with Jane, our unbaptized seeker. When Jane first came to us, she didn't belong to an order in the church because she wasn't baptized and she hadn't celebrated any rituals that changed her status. It doesn't mean that she's a bad person. It just means that she has no obligations to fulfill, no rights or responsibilities to the church. She can come and go as she likes. But once she celebrates the right of entrance into the catechumenate, also called the right of acceptance into the order of catechumens, her status changes. She now has an official role in the church because now she belongs to the order of catechumens. As a catechumen, she's a member of the household of God and has specific rights and responsibilities in the church. Her primary job as a catechumen is to hear God's word and to live it. Now, once Jane has learned how to live God's word so fully that people see Christ in her and in everything she does, she celebrates the rite of election. Here, her status changes again. She's still a member of the order of catechumens, but now she's a special kind of catechumen. She's a catechumen with a promise that she will be baptized at the next Easter vigil. Once she's baptized, Jane's status and order changes permanently. She becomes a member of the faithful, a member of the priestly people of God. Her new order gives her new rights and responsibilities. Namely, she has the right and duty to participate fully, consciously and actively in the liturgy to offer the worship of Christ to God the Father. Her new baptismal status empowers her to do three things in Mass with all the baptized. First, she can profess the creed that all the baptized share. Second, she exercises her baptismal priesthood by offering the prayers of the faithful. And third, with all the baptized and led by the priest, she gives worship to God the Father in the Eucharistic prayer and offers herself with Christ in a sacrifice of praise. 
The most important thing we need to remember is that baptism changes our order. When a person is baptized, they forever belong to the order of the faithful. They can never go back to being unbaptized. Everyone who is validly baptized is part of the order of the faithful, whether they're an infant or someone who was baptized long ago, or they haven't even received communion or are part of another Christian denomination. Therefore, Alex and Fred are rightful members of the order of the faithful. Even though Alex, our Catholic, has never celebrated confirmation or first communion, and Fred is Lutheran, their baptism makes them members of the baptismal priesthood. Even though neither of them can share in communion yet, we honor their baptismal order because they still have a job to do at Mass. Their baptismal right and duty is to pray the creed, the prayers of the faithful, and the Eucharistic prayer. As a catechumen, Jane will be dismissed from the Mass before the creed for two important reasons. First, she's not yet a member of the Order of the Faithful and cannot yet offer her sacrifice of praise as part of the priestly people of God. And second, she still has a job to do herself. With God's word, she is sent out to share her joy and her spiritual experiences and thus learn to live that word in her life. Once she's baptized, she will join Alex and Fred and all the baptized to give worship to God in Christ. Together, they will all be sent out, dismissed at the end of Mass, to glorify God by their lives and announce the gospel. So here's how the Order of Christian Initiation of Adults says all that about the dismissal of catechumens. Paragraph 75 says, When catechumens are present with the congregation of the faithful, they must normally be gently dismissed before the Eucharistic celebration begins, unless there are difficulties that suggest otherwise for they ought to wait for baptism by which they will be incorporated into the priestly people and deputed to participate in the new worship of christ every time jane is at mass from the day she becomes a catechumen until the day she is baptized she is gently dismissed sent out to do her job as a catechumen and that dismissal, her sending forth into the world to share her joy and spiritual experience, will prepare her to enter the order of the priestly people of God at her baptism and become a member of the faithful who will offer herself completely with all the baptized in worship of God in Christ. Well, I hope that helps you do your ministry with more confidence and joy as you grow in your understanding of the initiation rites. If you want to learn more, come to TeamRCIA.com where you'll find the help you need to make disciples. I'm Diana McAlintle. Thanks from all of us at Team RCIA.